All right, so you consider making a move to Florida and you don't know whether Tampa, Florida or Orlando, Florida is the best for you. Well, in today's video, we are gonna talk about the pros and cons of each. That way you can make an informed decision about which area and community is gonna serve you best and we're gonna get into that right now. this is your first time to the channel, we make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. My name is Juan Alcala. I am a licensed real estate agent and a team leader here with the True Living Group, and we help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest in the Tampa Bay area. And in today's video, we are doing something very unique. Typically on this channel, we only talk about Tampa. We don't talk about the other areas. But in today's video, I wanna talk about the differences between Orlando and Tampa. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because a lot of the times when people reach out to us to start the process of making that move, you know, I get the phone calls, I get the text messages, I get the EMs, heck, I'm even getting DMs on Instagram right now. But what happens is, when people come to us, they're kind of sure they wanna to move to Tampa, but they might be looking at other areas like Orlando or Jacksonville or Miami. So what I figured is I'd start this series of, you know, Tampa versus blank. And today we're gonna to be talking about Tampa versus Orlando because this seems to be the most common one for a lot of good reasons. They're not that far apart. You know, it's technically only uh, about a two hour and 10 minute drive from to the mouse's house, that's what we call Orlando here, by the way, um, from Tampa, depending on where you're at in the area. But, you know, both of these uh, areas have just wonderful amenities and things we're gonna talk about today, but they also have their pros and cons. And I think that, you know, knowing what those are up front can probably help you make a better decision. So in today's video, we are gonna get into those types of topics. So I wanna get right into this, all right? And typically I will give some kind of a formal list of, you know, pros and cons and there's seven good things and seven bad things. But today I don't want to do that. Today I want to, I want to share with you my experience because, you know, living in the Tampa Bay area, um, it's been a wonderful, wonderful time for me and my family. It's been almost four years. We've absolutely loved every minute of it, but we've also been to Orlando enough to know. Okay, and I've got working professionals. I have a bunch of referral partners that we send clients who decided that they are gonna to move to Orlando. You know, we send them their way and they, they've enjoyed their experience in Orlando. So this isn't about one's better than the other. It's about what, what area is gonna be right for you. That is the thing we wanna focus on and cover today. And I hope that this really helps, you know, clarify, you know, which area, you know, would serve you best. So let's kind of get into this. And the reason I, I, I wanted to do this is because, you know, recently last week, I was in Orlando for a conference, you know, uh, with my real estate brokerage, and it was wonderful. Um, Orlando is a very cool city. And what I mean by that is like, you know, this place didn't used to exist. You know, Walt Disney bought Orlando, <laughs> essentially, you know, he went out and bought Swampland back in the 60s. No one wanted it, right? And, you know, everybody wanted to be on the coast if they were coming to Florida at all. No one wanted that property. And then Walt went out and bought this, which I think is really cool. I mean, what a great entrepreneur. What a great vision. There's lots to be said about that. And, you know, the number one obvious thing when it comes to Orlando, the big attraction there is going to be Disney World, right? Disney World is an experience all to its own. It's created a city around it, and that's what Orlando is. Nothing probably would still be there today if it was not for Disney World, and you gotta give them props. That is awesome. And you know, you've got Universal Studios there, and there's so many things, right? You can go check out all the Orlando pros and cons videos, just like mine. There are plenty of great real estate agents that can help guide you through that process, but I wanna share it from my experience. And um, that way I'm not talking about something that I, I don't know and I, I can't speak to, but I think it's important that we cover these things. When you're coming to Florida, you know, the question that you really need to answer before anything else is, am I coming for, you know, work because of employment? 
Because if you are, that's going to dictate a lot of things for you. Or am I coming for lifestyle? And this is the biggest question, regardless of whether you end up in Miami, Jacksonville, Orlando, Tampa, Naples, wherever, right? What is the lifestyle that you're trying to accomplish? And this is my number one question that I ask when people just like you reach out to us. I say, hey, look, a, a house is only four walls and a roof, right? And they are, they're all the same, but how you live in it, that's what makes that's what makes it a home and more importantly how you live in the community that you're in and that's why you really want to dig into those lifestyle questions because if you're a water baby and you love the beach and you take yourself and you move yourself from wherever let's say you're moving from seattle washington just as an example and you're used to being around the coast and you really love being around the coast you just don't like the great dreary days and you're making a move for weather and you move to the middle of florida which is the swamp y'all let's not be mistaken here it's going to be hot and there is not going to be an ocean anywhere near you it's two and a half hours each way okay so you're going to go to cocoa beach or you're most likely going to go to clearwater beach or indian rocks beach like these are the types of of, of, of places you go and you know it's there's some lakes out there that's wonderful, but I don't know if y'all know this or not, we've got gators and things like that. I'm not playing in lakes, just <laughs> not taking my kids to play in lakes, and I'm most certainly not taking them to play in the lakes in the swamp, which is where Orlando is. Now, please, Orlando's beautiful. It has its own characteristics about it. I'm not trying to beat up on it and say that, um, that it's pure swampland, because that's just not the case. I'm just making light of it, but that's where it was, okay? And it has grown into this beautiful metropolitan area. Make no mistake about it. I got to give them credit. It's a lot newer than Tampa. So if we're talking about pros versus cons, Tampa's an old city. It was established a long time ago. But if you are a water baby, if you want to be near the water, you definitely want to consider areas like Tampa, because... And when you look at Florida, you'll say, oh, it's only two hours to the beach, but that's not how it works, guys. If, if you've got a family to take along with you, loading up the car, packing up, it's, it's not a very long day trip if you're gonna try to make that happen. And the reason being is because of traffic. And this is a, both a, uh, it's a con for both cities as far as I'm concerned, but make no mistake about it, Orlando traffic is much, much more congested. I-4, which is the main highway that goes in between uh, Orlando and Tampa, is extremely congested all the way across the board, all the way from Tampa, all the way to Orlando. And if I pulled it up on the map right now, which um, I'll do, I'll put up here, it'll say it's like two hours and 10 minutes or two hours and 30 minutes to drive from Tampa to, um, let's say, uh, Disney World, for an example. But real world drive time, that's gonna be almost three hours because congestion is crazy. When I drove out here uh, last week, I went out on a Sunday afternoon, a Sunday afternoon, and it took me two hours and 50 minutes when the map told me it was gonna take two hours and 10 minutes. And that's how long it should take, but because of traffic and congestion and the amount of volume that's on that road, it literally took me two hours and 50 minutes. And the crazy part was, is there was no accidents. And we stopped three times on the way out to Orlando. There are a lot of people who make this commute between Tampa and Orlando for work or Lakeland in Orlando for work and it has become so congested because of the amount of population and migration we've had to Florida and that's not Orlando's fault it's not Tampa's fault it just is Florida's grown so much and our road systems weren't built for that so we're really kind of suffering through this together uh, but I will say this it is far more congested in Orlando make no mistake about it the other thing that I, I would like to point out versus you know pros or cons if we want to kind of go this route is the Tampa airport is in my mind it's one of the best airport experiences that I've had in this country and I've, I've been blessed enough to travel quite a bit I haven't been everywhere so I can't compare it against everything and I'm making some generalities here so please take this stuff with a grain of salt compare it versus where you live I'm sharing from my experience I'm not sharing with you know this is an absolute but here's what I'll say I, I grew up in Detroit we had a humongous airport where Delta used to be the hub and then they moved everything to Atlanta I've been to a lot of airports you know Colorado San Diego um, you know Dallas Houston I, all the major airports and what I will say is the ease of use for the Tampa Airport is incredible if you're on Clearwater Beach it's about a 45 or 50 minute drive with traffic um, and basically anywhere in Pinellas County. Same thing for St. Petersburg. If you're in St. Pete, it takes you about 35 to 40 minutes to get to the airport. If you're in downtown Tampa, obviously it's much closer. Um, the airport is very easily accessible. I typically will show up at, with an hour of, of, of my flight time, park, 
get on the tram, get to my gate, and have time to sit down and have a cup of coffee and catch up on emails and still board the plane comfortably. It is very easy to get on and off and I absolutely love it. Now, my experience with MCO or Orlando's <laughs> airport is entirely different. Um, that airport is very busy and for obvious reasons, it you know, you've got Disney World there. Tampa doesn't have Disney World. Bush Gardens is not Disney World, right? So I'm give them the point for Disney World, make no mistake about it, that's their thing. If amusement parks are your jam, then Disney World is probably going to be your spot. But we do have that here in Tampa as well with Busch Gardens, but they are not the same, make no mistake about it. But when you get off in the airport in MCO, it does this really weird thing where the people coming into the gates are dumped where the tram dumps the people off who just got off their flights and it can... it. It is like a cocktail of nonsense because you've got people trying to push their way in and people trying to push their way out at the same time. It's super stressful. My wife used to lose her mind. We would we would fly into there to go see her dad who was living in Florida well before us. And it was just very, very difficult. Now, they've been trying to make improvements and, and you know, give them their thing. I understand that that airport wasn't built for that volume, but here it is and we're dealing with it, right? So like, this is another thing I've noticed. Now, a, a thing I wanna give to Orlando that I don't think we have as much of in Tampa is a dining experience. The culinary experience in Orlando, I was very impressed. You know, from the time we sit in there, we had sushi at a, a sushi restaurant that was lights out and they were not on the top 10 list. And if that was the case, man, that means Orlando has way more food experiences than, than Tampa does. Now, we've got some beautiful dining here in Tampa, not to take away from us, but this area here, especially when you get closer to the beaches, downtown Tampa is, is definitely more culinary driven. If you get towards the Gulf Coast beaches, we definitely do not have as many. So, you know, I'm gonna give props to Orlando for that because I know they are bringing in world-class chefs. And, you know, let's be honest, you know, Orlando is is the corporate restaurant capital of the United States. They hold, you know, restaurant groups like the Darden Group and, you know, those places that, that own things like uh, Texas Roadhouse and um, Olive Garden and those types of things, uh, you know. So that's not necessarily the best thing, but they have been growing in their culinary experience. And like I said, there's a lot of, of really great, even may I say world-class restaurants that have been moving in Orlando that are getting a lot of credibility. Shout out to those guys because I think they're doing a good job. I would love to see more of that here in Tampa um, you know but one of the challenges we face there is because we are so driven by tourism in our area here that once you get to the Gulf beaches people don't care about having a five-star uh, dining experience all the time what they're looking for is a, a five-star beach experience and those those things don't necessarily equate so again not saying that doesn't exist but they're not as as prevalent or as common as they are in, in Orlando so that's something you would take note of uh, the other thing here is uh, you know Orlando's gotten very expensive for a, for a lot of reasons too. Their growth has been tremendous, um, you know. But if you look at areas like Lake Nona that didn't weren't even on the map before, these these housing prices have just gone through the roof. And it hasn't been that much different than Tampa. So I don't necessarily think this is one or one A. You know, we'll, I'll drop some pricing in here too. You know, so we can kind of wrap our mind around it. Because at the time of this recording, the median sales price for a home in Orlando is like right around three hundred eighty six thousand, and in Tampa it's four hundred eight thousand. Now we're talking about the city's property. We're not talking about the greater area. And again, Orlando's more than just Orlando. You know, it makes up Kissimmee, St. Cloud. It pulls in a lot of these areas, just like Tampa. Tampa pulls in Wesley Chapel and, you know, St. Pete, uh, Clearwater. Those are kind of lumped into that area as well. So it throws it off. And I'm just going to give you the frank because I always talk about this with everybody. You know, in order to get you know, a three bedroom, three bath, 1900 square foot home in the t in the greater Tampa Bay area right now, you're looking at about $450,000. And when I was doing the research for this video, you know, it's very similar in Orlando. It's not much different. What I will say is a, a lot of the homes are a little bit larger than they are in Tampa because they're newer. You know, those homes were built the 80s, 90s and 2000s and up when we have properties that date all the way back to the 1900s um, in uh, St. Petersburg in Tampa. So it kind of messes with that number a little bit, but you know, in terms of real estate, they're very similar in values and demand as well. I know that Orlando has been um, a little bit further ahead of us in terms of this flattening out. Um, you know, at the time of this recording here, uh, Tampa was ranked as the highest 
uh, value growth in the United States uh, in, in May 2022, 33%. I mean, Tampa's still on fire. We're starting to see some of that flattening as well um, with listing inventory starting to rise, but it is still not easy to get a great home here. Very nice homes. You know, every, something that is turnkey that has been renovated is going to go very, very quickly. Typically in the first weekend, it's not sitting on the market forever, but we are starting to see those make me move sellers the people who haven't done anything that are asking top dollar, those people are taking reductions like crazy. So it's one of the things. Now, when I was in Orlando, we stayed in this Airbnb, which technically is not allowed. And I know it's not allowed because there was a sign in the yard that the county had put in there and says, you are in violation. <laughs> so here we are staring, staring in this Airbnb, which I think this, this rule has changed. But you know, a lot of the times when, when I get these reach outs, it's from investors saying, hey, we're looking at Airbnbs. And what I want you to know is more and more communities are putting the kibosh on Airbnbs. They want to put an end to this because you've got absentee owners, maybe people aren't taking good as uh, care of their properties. You've got parties. They just, they, the communities don't love these things. And again, here we are thinking that we're good. We show up and we got a sign in the yard. Didn't change the fact that we stayed there for a week. We had paid our dues. We didn't know. But when you arrive and the county's got a stake in the yard saying that you can't be, you know, you can't be doing this as an Airbnb, that's very interesting. And I bring that up to you because again, I have these phone calls from these investors. Hey, I'd love to pick up an Airbnb here or an Airbnb there. This is something that you need to take note of if that is your plan. You need to know if it's a, if it's legal in the county. You need to know if it's legal in the city. You need to, and you especially need to know if it's legal for the HOA. If the homeowners association, the governing body doesn't allow for it, then it doesn't matter what the state or the local government says because the HOA is an absolute no. And this is going to be community to community specific. So take note of that if you're considering making that move. But you know, I was able to walk the neighborhood, show a little bit of real estate, talk about pricing. So I wanna jump over there right now in this video and show you what that community in Orlando looked like because I thought it was a really nice community. It was called Dr. Phillips. This entire city was named after an individual uh, who apparently is you know, a tremendous benefactor uh, <laughs> and has made a, a lot of contributions to that city because the school was named after him, the road was named after him, the entire community was named after him. And I thought it was a really nice spot. We were 19 minutes away from Universal where our conference was, and I just thought it was really worth sharing. So let's jump over in that video right now, and I'm gonna show you guys what that looked like. I'm in the neighborhood where my Airbnb is, and I wanted to share this with you guys. We were talking about Orlando versus Tampa in this video. And I just wanted to give you some, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, insights as to what the neighborhood looks like you know we're staying in a, in a very typical neighborhood we're uh, less than 10 minutes away from universal studios where our conference is this week uh, with my brokerage and you know i've been walking the neighborhood every morning just to kind of get some insights as like how does this compare to you know tampa and you know, I've shared this with you guys before that, you know, my personal residence is right by the beach. So it's a really flat area by nature because we're, you know, we're right at sea level, essentially. My home is like 13 feet above sea level, which is so close. Um, I'm in a non-flood zone, which is awesome, but there are a lot of areas that do require flood insurance. So it's something to be mindful of. Um, and one of the immediate differences that I noticed in this neighborhood, and it looks like a majority of these homes were built somewhere in the late seventies and early eighties. The architecture is very similar to what I remember back home in Detroit. But the other thing that you really get in this neighborhood is there's hills. Like, as you can see, this home is up on a berm. It might be a little bit dark there, but let me turn around and show you this house that we're at right now. Give you guys some insights so i'm just walking the corner here but like well, there's a nice little little berm here <laughs> you know if uh if, if i was back home in detroit i'd use that hill to sled on when i was a kid you know but it's a great neighborhood it, it's very similar to me at, it reminds me of palm harbor safety harbor back home in pinellas county and as you start to travel a little bit north you you tend to get a little bit more opportunity to have some rolling hills but really quiet nice little neighborhood most of the real estate here and this home right on the corner right here uh is pending sale but it was listed at five hundred and fifty thousand. it was a three bedroom uh two bath like 2340 square foot home you know, ranch style home, you know, newer roof on it. Nice property. Um, a lot of the pools in the area here, homes in the area here have pools. 
Um, and again, you know, this neighborhood's great. And you know, the, the idea of this video was not to say that Tampa's better than Orlando, or Orlando's better than Tampa. Um, I think they live entirely different. You know, if you're into the theme park, you know, Disney universal thing, then like, of course, Orlando's gonna be a much better fit for you in general. But you know, if a beach is important to you, if you, um, you know, like that older style of Florida, then Tampa's definitely gonna lean that way. Um, obviously downtown Tampa, it's bumping, right? It, it, you know, it's the unofficial tech hub of Florida. There are a lot of good things, um, you know, when it comes to the area, but I wanted to give you some guys, some insights as, you know, what do these neighborhoods look like? How do they live? And, you know, being so close to Orlando, you've got the conferences and those types of things, but you also have crazy traffic, you know, listen, Tampa's got, our traffic is crazy. I tell everybody that, but I drove on a Sunday afternoon from Tampa to Orlando and it took me almost three hours. Now, when you pull up Google Maps, it tells you it's only going to take 10 hours or two hours and 10 minutes. It took me almost three hours. I stopped twice on the highway. No accidents, just the volume of traffic coming into Orlando. So that is definitely something to keep in mind because I-4, which is the main highway coming in on Orlando, it was not built to withstand the volume of traffic that it receives every day. So be mindful of that, right? Um, but I, I do think, you know, uh, Orlando's got a lot of really nice restaurants. Um, there's so much to do, you know, obviously this place has been built, you know, for families, for people to come and, and really live. And there's so many up and coming areas like Nona, a lot of really nice areas in Orlando. And again, I, I, this isn't a, a you know, you've got to be against Orlando because you're for, for Tampa. But I just, you know, I know a lot of the phone calls that I get personally are from people just like you who have not, you know, you're like, I'm moving to Florida, but you don't know where, you know, and I know this because 50% of the phone calls that I get start out, hey, we're moving to Florida and we're thinking about going to Orlando, Jacksonville, Miami, Tampa, or, you know, Naples. And these are the conversations and the, how they start. So I think, you know, being able to share with you guys some insights about the differences between how these uh, two areas live, I think is super important. So I hope there's value. What I would love to know is the areas that you are considering when it comes to making that move to Florida. Put it in, down in the comments below. I love that. I love hearing those things, you know, because for me, I know how, that's how it started. When we started, I've told the story before, but we looked at Jacksonville because it was up and coming. It was, you know, the uh, the medical industries there, uh, young professionals were moving there. And then we looked at Orlando, but for us, it was too busy. We've been to Florida for the last 10 years, at least once a year. And Orlando's just busy. And Kate and I, just in all interest of full transparency, we're not theme park people, right? Disney gives me anxiety. I, I love it. I think it's wonderful, but it, it's not my thing. It's not our thing. So, you know, for us, moving to Florida meant the water, the oceans. You know, we wanted to be close to the water. We wanted to have access to go look at a sunset every day, to put our toes in the sand. And for us, that was super important. And it might not be for you. Maybe the theme parks are your thing. Maybe you want to be, you know, in an area where, you know, they're doing a lot of corporate conferences or this is really beneficial to your career. And I could see how Orlando could be that space for you. But, you know, I just wanted to make sure that we walked the neighborhood a little bit because this is a great neighborhood. I could totally see myself living in an area like this. I've walked it every single morning because we've been here for four days and uh, I think it's a great spot. Uh, we're in Dr. Phillips is the area that we're in. Um, yes, somebody, literally the, the entire city is named after uh, a, a, a very prominent person in Orlando history. So I think it's really cool. I just wanted to share that with you guys. I'll take you on a little bit more tours of the city here. Um, we can check that out. I'm gonna get the drone up today too and then we'll see what else Orlando has to offer. All right, as you can see, this was a beautiful community. You know, 19 minutes to Universal Studios, plenty of shopping and dining, you know, within minutes of where we stayed. And the real estate was was very nice. Uh, it reminded me a little bit more of the Northern communities because I wasn't surrounded by as many palm trees as I am here in, in Tampa, but really nice area. I wouldn't have any issues, you know, living there with my family. That mid-level price point, right around 550,000 for the real estate was there. Very similar to, to my current neighborhood. Biggest difference 
differences are, you know, we're within two miles of the beach and that property is not. And if your draw isn't going to Universal or um, Disney World every weekend, then all of a sudden I'm, I have to start weighing things. And again, this isn't, I'm not bashing Orlando and I, I say Miles's house and I make light of that all the time just because that's not my thing. And in the interest of full transparency. I'm going to be biased. I live in Tampa, number one. I chose Tampa. We got to choose where we live. We looked at Jacksonville. We looked at Orlando. Um, we looked at Daytona for like a hot second. We looked at Cape Coral. Uh, we looked at uh, Jensen Stewart Beach. We were never interested in Miami or Boca Raton, those areas. It was just a lot busier than, than we were interested in. Doesn't mean they're not amazing areas. You just gotta know what, what lifestyle you want. And for us and our family, we were looking for flip-flop lifestyle, all about that flip-flop, laid back lifestyle and beach living. We wanted to have access to the beaches. My wife, Kate, who I've had on this channel before, she gave me very specific instructions. She said, I need to be within 15 minutes of the beach. We've got to have a house with, with four bedrooms and you got to have a pool or we ain't moving. That was her requirements. And we could make that happen for a very reasonable amount. And I tell people this all the time, even though Tampa, it was just recognized as the, the hottest growing real estate market with the highest value of growth in 2022 in, in, in May, it still, from a coastal perspective, is a value. And I say that all the time because it's true. If you look at areas like Boston, if you look at New York, if you look at San Diego, if you look at the Pacific Northwest, this is still inexpensive real estate. And I realize it's not cheap. And I understand that you know if you live here and, and you were making 40 or $50,000, now all of a sudden it's become very difficult. I'm not denying that. That is 100% true. But for people who are making a very good wage, if you live in California, you make California wages. You live in the PAC Northwest and you make those wages. You live in Colorado, you make those wages, the Northeast or even the Midwest, and you're making very good wages, then you can make a move to Tampa, Florida or Florida in general and live very comfortably. It is continuing to climb, make no mistake about it. But this is why it has grown so much. It's become very attractive because the cost of living, number one. And then obviously our weather is incredible, y'all. We get, they call St. Petersburg Sunshine City. I love that. There is so much sun. There is so much to do. Florida, to me, is meant to be lived outdoors. Oh, one of the other things. Orlando is typically four or five degrees hotter than it is here in Tampa. That's crazy when you think about that, especially when you get closer to the Gulf beaches like we are. Um, we are very, almost always, we are four or five degrees cooler than it is in that area in the, in the middle of the state there. And again, I'm not trying to beat up on everybody and I just wanna share my experiences. I could do this for literally two hours and I'm not going to. We're gonna start shutting this video down because um, I, I don't wanna get wrangled into this whole idea of like, that's bad or that's good. I just wanna share experiences. Listen, if you're looking for laid back, flip flop lifestyle with beaches, um, you know, very good food and, uh, and uh, dining, great shopping, a welcoming community, then I think Tampa's that. It's, it is 100% that. Now, are there knuckle here, knuckleheads here? Are you gonna run into people that you know you may not agree with your line? The answer is yes, just like everywhere else in America and Orlando is no different. If you want to be in, in a, a community that is newer, that's growing, um, you know, that's, that's getting busier, but also gives you access to these wonderful parks, right? Universal, and they're doing way more than that stuff, guys. We got the bright line going to Orlando. It's gonna come to Tampa. Tampa's the official tech hub. Uh, unofficial tech hub of Florida and continuing to draw new young talent to the area. There are a lot of young working professionals that are calling me on a regular basis going, what's going on in Tampa? We really want to come. And it's not much different in Orlando. I don't think one is necessarily better than the other, but I do believe that one is better than the other for you and that the lifestyle does matter. And I wanted to come in here and just share experience today, you know, and, and kind of draw the line between the two because they live so much different. Okay. Okay. and the communities are different. Orlando has been built on purpose. And what I mean by that is like, it was a city, it was made as a destination to bring people to, and the city's continuing to experience growth. A beautiful area. I'm telling you right now, there's some beautiful areas in Orlando, but Tampa has its own thing, right? It is on a bay. It, it literally has a peninsula attached to it, the St. Pete uh, Clearwater area with Gulf beaches. And I don't care who you are, I'm telling you right now, our beaches will ruin you. When you come, if you're a beach person, it is very hard to walk away from Tampa and say, man, that's not a place I don't wanna be. 
And I'm gonna shut this video down with this. And I wanna say thank you. Hey, please hit the subscribe button, click that little bell, that way you can be notified every time we make a new video like this. Let me know where you're watching from. I would love to hear where you're watching from. Ask me questions, y'all. I am not afraid to answer questions. I answer all of those questions down below. That's not a bot, it's not my assistant, it's me. I'll give you my personal uh, opinion, okay? And I'll share the facts when, when I have them about any information, especially when it comes to real estate. And if you're considering making that move, relocating, buy, selling, or investing in a Tampa Bay area, just know that my team here at the True Living Group has got your back, whether that's through phone call, text message, email, heck, you can even DM me on Instagram. However you gotta get hold of us, just know that we've got your back when it comes to making that move. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.